Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. <laughs> you wonder why you always open up with that introduction. I don't know. So, since I am all by myself tonight, I am doing something very radical. <laughs> I'm making another video. I made one early this morning, and now I'm making one at 7.13 in the evening here in West Michigan. It is still November the 13th, a Wednesday night. It is so early. I mean, I cannot go to bed. I went to bed, like I said this morning, I went to bed at 8 o'clock with my wife because she had to be up by 3 o'clock to get ready, you know, finish packing her bags and load the car and, and get to Grand Rapids, which is about well, when she left last night, well, early in the morning, it wasn't snowing. It was just probably 19 degrees, freezing cold. But since she did make it to Denver, she called me. Our time was 9.30. It was 7.30 there, I think, there in Denver, Colorado. And our daughter Beth was going to pick her up around 8 o'clock. So I'm having a cup of tea tonight. I'm not, you know, sometimes I'm not sure if coffee keeps me awake or is it tea. Now I'm extremely tired this evening, so I don't think I'll have a problem going to bed. And once again, I can go to bed anytime because tomorrow I don't plan to do anything tomorrow at all. <laughs> it's supposed to snow tomorrow. See, we live close to the Lake Michigan. So we get lake effect snow. We get more snow than people who are inland. So it, we get a lot of snow. And usually it doesn't snow until the end of November, early December. But we really got hit the, the last couple of days with snow. So today, uh, I showed you the books on the Revelation of Jesus Christ, the New Testament book. And basically, in my state of just being kind of out of it, I have been reading The Prisoner of Love by Jeanette, uh, Jean Gannett. This just uh, was... Uh, I bought this from the New York Review book. It was copyrighted, copyright, copyright 1986. And this edition, I think was published in 2003. I did get out this biography I have of Gannett, a biography by Edmund White, winner, National Book Circles Award, Circle Award. So I was looking at this. I found this little information interesting. It says, Gannett was a vagabond whose entire belongings could be fitted into one small suitcase. He usually lived in hotels near a road, railroad, railway station the thief's abiding habit of wanting to be positioned for a quick getaway. The atheist Sartre may have called him Saint Jeanette with heavy irony, but Jeanette himself aspired toward a sort of secular beatitude. beatitude. He denied materialism, the machinery of career, the obligations of sustained friendship, even the vanity of artistic achievement in order to render his life exemplary. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I told myself I'm not going to get into another book. I got a ton of books on my to be read pile there in the living room. But I just wanted to get out because I really don't feel like looking at anything else tonight. So I read this all day when I wasn't dozing or messing with the computer or 
watching the birds from the kitchen window or looking out the front door or doing laundry or doing dishes in the kitchen. It's just kind of fiddle farting around all day. I didn't really feel like going anywhere because it, it was freezing cold out, icy roads. So I didn't go anywhere. I didn't mention I got a book in the mail. This, I, this book, it's another Rodrigo Friesen, Kennington Gardens. This was translated out of the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer. It says here in the back, Kennington Garden weaves an intricate narrative spanning more than a century from Victoria, London, to the dawn of the new millennium. Narrated by children's novelist Peter Hook, it is a story not only of Hook's life, but also that of J. M. Barry, Peter Pan, and Lewin Davies' boys. I think they were in the, in the British group, the Kinks. Over the course of one night in Kennington Gardens, a, a fantastical and terrible story emerges, a story of shadow identities and suicide, lost boys and found orphans. Kennington Gardens is an exploration of the charms and perils of children's literature told in torrential prose of a Latin American master. I want to get all his translated works this uh, Rodrigo Friesen, so that's why I got it. And I showed you, I've been reading this too, the journals of John Cheever in the vintage Cheever classic edition. This is a United Kingdom edition. I found it some thrift store a couple years ago. So I've been reading that. So that's what I've been reading off and on today in my state of just being out of it. One thing I was thinking about, it came to me tonight, why, somewhat of why I am feeling kind of out of it, because we're coming to the end of another year. We're coming to the, another, uh, the end of 2019 and soon we'll be in the year 2020. And when I come to the end of another year, I always find my mind remembering scenes from the past over the last 67 years of my life here on this earth. And you know, just things pop up, you know what I'm saying? There's, you're walking down a street where you're someplace and this memory just emerges out of the, your subconscious and rise to your consciousness. And, Things I never thought about. and uh, Now, today when I was thinking about these things and I thought, well, you know, I can mention things, these scenes from my past in a video. But the things that kind of come to my memory are my, is my sinfulness. <laughs> I lived a very sinful life. Uh, now, I've been a Christian since 1970, but I've had my my stumblings and my falls. Uh, even as a Christian, you live a life of repentance. You might commit not only outward sins once in a while, you, mean you don't live in a course of sin, but you do, you do fall. But you're always, there's always your inward corruptions, your sinful imaginations and sinful lust and sinful thoughts uh, because we're not totally sanctified. We're not totally holy yet until we die and then we become new. We become, we receive at the time of the resurrection a glorified body that will be able to live in the new creation. But right now even though we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and we are 
seeking by the power of the Holy Spirit to live an obedient life to the biblical pattern of Christian living there and but you always have that idea of the perfection of God uh, and his holiness and his purity and and when you walk with God you're always aware of, of how you have failed to love him with all your being with all your strength with all your mind with all your affections and your whole way of life there are so many things in your way of life especially living in Americans our culture that you're always failing or sinful I mean I think how much food I waste uh, how much money I waste these material blessings that have given to me given to us to use for his glory and to magnify his name and to help the saints and help the poor and to help people who are in dire straits now you know we do we do tithe and my wife does support you know the Holland Rest Commission and Habitat Humanity and relief and she does all these things but you can never do enough <laughs> you're still you feel like you should be giving everything not just 10 percent or 20 percent but that you should give everything that you have in mat material things to those who don't have anything because if you have God and you have salvation in Christ what else really do you really need if you have the gift of eternal life, forgiveness of sins, the hope of, et of life in the new creation after you die. So, uh, plus, if you really are a Christian, you've lost these desire for material things. That your affections are not set on this world, but they're set on those things that are above. That, you're set, that your heart is fixed on Christ. And and that you want to please him and walk with him and you don't want any idols in your life you're not bowing down to any false gods so yeah but still you are just there's always that that battle between the the flesh and the spirit and you're always there's never really a day when you don't feel some kind of tension within yourself. Now you know my struggles with doubt. Uh, I'm always feeling a, this a darkness trying to oppress me. And especially when my wife is gone now, that my wife is very, my wife is a, has very strong faith. And she's been a Christian since she was a girl and she's always been lived a very devout Christian life whereas I look at my life it's been pretty rotten my wife grew up in a very traditional conservative Dutch Christian reform home her parents were in church my wife went to church has gone to church her whole entire life she was born in the church and I know she'll die in the church and and she's very involved in her church and, and Bible studies and church congregational meetings and helping out, you know, f preparing meals for shut-ins and visiting people and going to Christian things. And, you know, here I'm at home just battling with my own, <laughs> my own little demons. So yeah, I come to the end of the year and I look over my life and I've seen, I, I look over my life and I, even as a Christian, I became a Christian when I was 18 years old in Richmond, California. I was in the Jesus movement. Came into the doctrines of sovereign free grace in 1975 and 
I've always believed in the Bible to be the Word of God. I've always, I never really doubted that. What I've doubted is my own faith because I see so little fruit of the Holy Spirit. I see little, such little Christ-likeness and love for God and love for God's covenant people and love for humanity. I just seem to be so wrapped up in my own fears and dreads and depression and I look around me in the world and America and politics and world history and I feel at times that I am just in an insane in a, in a, a, in a sane asylum like a, a madhouse <laughs> and I long to just wake up every day and just feel the peace of God that passes all understanding. To feel that somewhat at peace with everything, but I don't. So. And then my past haunts me, and even though I know I've been forgiven of my sins, I've confessed my sins, I've repented of them, I don't want to live a sinful life, I want to live as a child of God, I want to be an obedient son of God. I want to love the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to be a man of prayer, a man of the Word of God. I want to be a shining light in this world of darkness. And yet I feel like I'm just falling on my face all the time. So that's just my thoughts tonight. Like I said, today I when I wasn't dozing or watching the birds or writing in my diary or watching videos in booktube or looking at book reviews or I read The Prisoner of Love by Jean Jeanette and reading the journals of John Cheever I'm drinking tea it's too early to go to bed and so I'll just wander in the hermit hut and wait for tomorrow to come. Tomorrow is a Thursday. I don't plan to do anything. Write in my diary, read my books, eat food, watch the birds, and pray for eternal salvation. So I just thought I'd share these random thoughts. And I hope you're having a good night. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And uh, until next time. Bye.